morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Matt Gerber, Executive Director of the Diamond Allegiance. I'm excited to have uh, Rob Wooten, founder and CEO of C35 Baseball out of North Carolina and South Carolina, uh, here with me today. Um, C35 is one of our newest members in the Diamond Allegiance and uh, super excited to, to have them on board and for you all to learn a little bit more about um, what makes C35, um, in our minds, uh, one of the top organizations in the country. So, Rob, I appreciate you joining me this morning and uh, looking forward to getting started. So if you wouldn't mind just kind of jumping in right in, tell us a little bit about your history in baseball, um, you know, what you've done in the game. Yeah, sure. Good morning, Matt. Um, and thanks for having me here on this and able to talk about our organization. Um, baseball has been a part of my life uh, from really from the very beginning, uh, from Little League. Uh, I didn't quite have the, the travel ball experience like our kids have now. Uh, it was more Babe Ruth League, but just I were obviously the memories that were created at that level uh, was something that I cherish forever. And, and, and you wanna create that type of memory and, and culture and environment for your kids now. Um, so I had a really good start upbringing with some really qualified coaches and, and mostly just people that almost act as a, as a second dad or a third dad with the coaches that, that I had um, and, and traveled with and just a, just a really cool and fun experience and the friends and, 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 and friendships and relationships that you, that you create over that time. And got into high school, um, realized that baseball was probably my ticket to do anything in sports. Uh, obviously, I played all, all three sports growing up, um, enjoyed playing basketball, enjoyed playing football for a short amount of time, wasn't great in football, but uh, I, knew I knew baseball was my opportunity um, and excelled at the high school level and was fortunate enough to get a scholarship to play at the University of North Carolina, uh, which was my dream school. It's still my dream school. Um, I'm, I'm still fully in love, as you can tell, with the colors that I'm wearing today. Um, and, you know, got to a little bit of a rocky start uh, in Chapel Hill. I, I came in with an injury. Uh, it took me a, a few years uh, to kind of get on the field. And even when I did, it was a little bit of a struggle, which which made me so much better down the road. It was it was tough at first. But, you know, coming up through Little League and, and middle school and high school, I, I didn't know how to sit on a bench and still be engaged and and be a good teammate, but you know, it, it taught me, you know, how you could still impact uh, sitting on the bench, not playing, but still being a, a positive influence in the dugout. So it's something that I actually, you know, people probably look at as a negative thing, but I, at, at the time I did see it as a negative thing, but it, it grew into a positive situation for me. And I was able to get healthy and, and really, you know, my last three years at, at Carolina, uh, I was able to, to impact the team on the field at that point um, and played in three college world series, uh, lost in two national championships with, you know, against Dominic Lee's own Pat Casey in Oregon State. Um, so that still that still bothers me a little bit. Um, but it was a wonderful experience in Chapel Hill. I uh, still go back there on a on a, a monthly basis. To be honest, we got great relationships there. I was fortunate enough to be drafted um, by the Milwaukee Brewers in 2008. Spent 15 years in professional baseball as, as a player and a coach. Uh, made my major league debut uh, in July of, of 2013 and was able to spend three years uh, playing in the major leagues. Battled some injuries uh, in my last part of my career with the Reds, um, but it, it transitioned in me to, to be a coach. Um, so I spent the last two years as a pitching coach in the Cincinnati Reds organization and just really learned a lot uh, from the coaching aspect. You know, transition from a player to the coach is not the easiest thing in the world. There's a lot of things that you just don't know. It, 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 it teaches you a lot how to communicate, how to relate. Um, so that actually helped me a lot on the coaching side with our C35 kids and, and vice versa. Coaching our C35 kids actually helped me coach our, our pro players. You know, so um, it's been a wonderful ride for me in the game of baseball. And it, I still got a long ways to go in it. Um, but to this point, it's been it's been one heck of a ride. Yeah, sounds like it. Um, one question that kind of popped up in my mind is, you know, we hear a lot uh, nowadays and college baseball about the transfer portal and, you know, the things that are happening um, today. And it sounds like you had the opposite experience. So, so what kept you from transferring? Obviously UNC was your, was your dream school. We get that, but you know, it's hard to put in a lot of effort um, and not get a chance to, to get on the field. So what was it that kept you from transferring and um, what did you learn from that process? Uh, that's such a great question because the two years that I spent one year redshirting and the other year of just not seeing the field, transferring crossed my mind every day, um, mostly because I was a young, immature kid. So all I wanted to do was point the fingers at somebody else. 
it was their fault, not mine. Um, and that's unfortunately kind of the world we live in right now, where the easy way out is just to quit and go somewhere else. That was just not the way I was raised. Uh, obviously, the love and passion for North Carolina was a big piece of that. But I'm not sure if the rules were the same today, if I would have actually stayed. But I'm so glad the rules weren't the same back then, because that would have been a massive mistake uh, on, on my end. I know I know Mac Brown, our, our, our head football coach there, it, he recruits and says it's not a four-year decision, it's a 40-year decision to come to North Carolina. And it's the truth. Um, it's such a family-type atmosphere there and environment. Um, and it's just it's great to go back. And it's been 14 years since I played there, but you walk in there and they treat you like gold. Um, so it's just, but that that is such a, a, a game changer today. And it's something that we try to teach our kids even at this at this level that the grass is not always greener, you know, before pointing fingers, look at yourself first and make sure you're doing all the right things before you decide just to quit and walk and go somewhere else. So it taught me a lot there in that moment because it would have been very easy to go somewhere else. Um, but I am so glad that I did. Yeah, that's great. And listen, I, I think that there's always situations where, you know, kids need to move on, whether it's from a travel ball situation or a college, right? We're not saying that you yes. know, transferring isn't, isn't always the uh, the right option, but I do think that um, you know learning um, to work through adversity is is really important. Um, you know, I'll just give you a quick anecdote about my playing uh, career. Um, I started off at Furman University in uh, Greenville, South Carolina, and um, ended up transferring back home to be with who is now my my wife. And my first year back, I was a Division One transfer back to a Division Two school and. The school had recruited me out of high school and I had kind of pushed them aside. So I spent a whole year feeling like I was one of the better players on the roster, but not getting to play because I hadn't earned the trust of the coach. Um, I went into the coach's office uh, the next fall and he flat looked at me in the face and said, you know, you'll never you'll never play for me because of the, your attitude. Right. You, you think that you deserve it and you don't work for it. I took that to heart um, and ended up, you know, being the guy behind the plate in the college world series at the division two level that year. Right. So I think there's a lot to be said about just that learn of sh that learning from the struggle. So, um, so transitioning, obviously unbelievable playing career, college world series, major league baseball, professional coach. What makes you so excited about working with youth and, and, and why did you start C35? When did you start it? Um, and what makes you so excited about the program? You know, I, I never envisioned being this involved uh, in, in amateur baseball, youth baseball, you know, whatever words you want to use with that. I did always invest in young players in our area and community here when I would be home during the off season, I would go and help um, just just to be around, be a presence, just to share some knowledge, just to have some fun. And, and, and they were teaching me at the same time, you know, so but I never had a vision of anything uh, of being and starting a, an amateur or travel ball organization. I was actually approached while I was in spring training of 2018. Actually, I was rehabbing an injury in 2018 out, out of Arizona. And I got a phone call and it was essentially asking me would I consider doing something like that. And after thinking about it and the need of some assistance and help in the area that we were in, I said, sure, let's do it. You know, so, you know, we started with two teams. I wasn't even here. I, I had some really nice help. We started two teams and, and then one thing led to another and I got home and was able to see the impact that you could have uh, and, and, and how they listen and interact and, and, and apply what you're trying to teach and coach and, and seeing that the positive impact that you have, not, on, not only on them, but their families. Um, it just kind of drove me to do more. And then we started a high school program with one team. Uh, and then you started to be able to kind of assist and, and, and teach the, the recruiting side of things and share my experience of what you know, it was like for me when I was being recruited. So then that just kind of got my juices flowing even more. And we we had a facility open. Uh, so now we started to invest in player development um, and we started to grow in our area. And it started to become outsiders looking in, wanting to know what we were doing and we kind of advanced out into another market, started a team. And it just kept on and kept on and kept on. And, you know, now we're up to 60 plus teams. Uh, we got four facilities uh, and we invest in back into our players and player development and, and, and want to give them resources that 
not only are going to help them, but it also keeps them from getting in trouble. Um, there's just so many positive things. And, and is it a year round program? Yes, we do not play year round, but we have resources for our players year round. I think that's very, very important. They have a schedule. It's very similar to a high school college pro schedule from, you know, February, March to, to October. Uh, there's a lot of practice time involved. We, we do have winter programs during the off season um, that, that we are extremely proud of and have a lot, a lot of fun doing it. We travel, my, my staff and I travel to our other locations to visit those players and put on some in, instructional camps with them. Um, so my vision has changed every single year. Um, and it's got to a point where, you know, it's, it's just so much fun and you see the impact that you have, not to mention the staff that we have built and the impact that they have, not only on me, but also our players. Uh, it's just been a really, really cool uh, adventure and journey. Um, and it's just getting better, as you can see on this call. So um, it, it's, it's been a blessing to me uh, to, to have C35 is something that I'm really proud of. And the C came from the interlocking North Carolina logo and the 35 was my number. So that, that's where the, 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 the logo and, and brand came from it. So it means a lot to me. It means a lot to my family. It means a lot to this community. And, and eventually it's going to mean a lot to the state and hopefully the region. Yeah, absolutely, Rob. And, you know, I think it's a really cool story and one that you hear a lot, right, um, with organizations that um, for those uh, the, for those organizations out there that are just starting up and trying to figure out, like, how do I grow? How do how do I get better? Um, a lot of the guys that I've been able to befriend through the Diamond Allegiance and obviously through my own experience, I think one thing that st st sticks out to me is you didn't start this to have 60 teams, right? You, start, you started this to make an impact on kids and do right by kids and do things the right way. And then you had organic growth because of that, right? And you surrounded yourself with really, really good people, right? That can help you kind of transform from, you know, one high school team, two youth teams to... You know, now if I think I'm right, I think you guys have over 200 high school players, over 450 youth players, right? Um, sure. And 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 being able to make a true impact on the, all those kids, but where it started was at a good place, right? And I think that that's, um, you know, one piece of advice that I would give any young guy that's starting in the travel business world um, is do things the right way, be truthful with people, look them in the eye, and follow through on things that you're going to do. Um, and, and you can have some success in this. So let's talk a little bit about your staff, um, obviously, to, to get to where your program has gotten. And, and honestly, a pretty short amount of time, if you look at some of the other larger programs out there. Tell me about some of your key employees and some things that they do for you that kind of separate uh, what C35 offers in your mind. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, we, I have been so fortunate to surround myself with some of the best, not only coaches and instructors, but just people. You know, and I think it's a people first, it's a relationship first industry. And I've just been really fortunate. People that are invested also in, in C35 and the vision of C35. So um, I have Jevin Wade is, is our chief baseball officer. He's a very well-respected high school coach in the area. He's very well known in, in the youth world here, what he has done and accomplished. Uh, and he's just been an incredible uh, right-hand man to me and helping me build uh, this organization. Uh, Ricky Young, another uh, legendary high school coach in this area, 20-something uh, years of experience at the high school level as our general manager. And Ricky was actually the, the, the one that really got our high school program off the ground and running um, just from his experience at that level. And he's done a tremendous job in, in that role. Um, Ray Bear, which is our sports performance director, he's also a partner in the ownership group of our facilities. Um, he is a guru, and I, I know he does not like me to use that word for him, but he is one of the best in the world at what he does. He's been involved in, in Major League Baseball, NHL. Um, he's just an incredible amount of knowledge and experience there that our players have access to. Um, you got Chris Nolan is, is really on our business side of things and, and something that I had no knowledge of. And probably maybe one of the most important pieces to this is to have that business mind at the table because at the end of the day, it is a business. If you don't run it that way, you're going to run yourself into the ground. You know, so you, you have to have those. He's also a baseball guy, too. I mean, he's, he's played baseball. He's been in baseball for a long time. His kid is really, really good. Uh, but Chris has been a, a great piece. Also in the ownership group of the, of the facility side. Um, Johnny Naren. Johnny Naren was a major league hitting coach. He was actually the hitting coach for the Milwaukee Brewers when I played there. Um, so we, we built that relationship. We're also from the same hometown. So we've always had that, that relationship. And 
he does a really good job with our hitters and, and introducing our philosophy to our coaches and our players and coaching our coaches. Um, Emily Wade um, probably is our, uh, is we call her the boss. You know, she's our CFO. Um, she tells us, you know, when we can and can't do something. Um, but as you can imagine, going from two teams and 24 players to 650 players, the amount of, of, of workload that is to keep up with all of that, that was coming in and out and, and, and paying staff members and, and getting all of that stuff aligned and organized. You can imagine, you know, how important she is uh, to our organization. Uh, we have David Miller. David Miller is our director of player development, another incredible high school baseball coach in the area, played at North Carolina, was drafted by the, the Miami Marlins. Um, he does a really good job organizing our, our, our camps. Um, so I could go on and on and on and on for, for days about people that we have, you know, invested in our organization. That That's our main core. Uh, Jamie Helsman as well. Jamie Helsman is our director of recruiting, and he does a really good job networking with, with local schools, uh, national schools. Uh, he does a really good job educating our kids on what that process looks like. Um, so everyone is kind of has their own role, and they do a really nice job. And it, it it takes a lot off my plate when I'm able to delegate, and I can I can keep my focus on the vision and, and, and continuing to grow and build the program. But there's no way that we're able to sustain what we have and not or grow it without the people that I just mentioned. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I want to highlight if I can, because I was I was lucky enough to to be up in your neck of the woods and meet with you and get to meet some of these people. So I'd like to take just a couple minutes on on a couple of these people that you mentioned. Um, the first one is Ray Bear. Um, you know, obviously you mentioned that he's worked with Major League Baseball, um, NFL, um, but dive a little bit deeper into what Ray does and um, how that's a benefit to your kids. First of all, Ray does everything. Um, you know, even even when I have an ailment or an injury or something that's bothering me, I go to Ray Bear. You know, he's he's able to treat me and tell me exactly what what to do, not to do. But beside that, I mean, he is one of the most knowledgeable people when it comes to sports performance, functional movements, um, and then most recently, uh, I went with him uh, to visit Dr. Norman out of New York which invented this player development program that USA Baseball uses with the semi four lights, uh, the cognitive based training. And we invested to bring that system to Pinehurst, North Carolina, to our facility, our, our headquarters. And Ray trains not only the body, but the mind uh, with our players. And I'm not going to do him any justice trying to explain this. This is something that I would love for him to jump on and explain this to, to the world of what what he does and how he does it and how we do it with our players and the success that we've had with our players with this. It's a very unique style of training. It's not your typical late weightlifting or conditioning or, or off season throwing and hitting. It's, it's, it really takes a, a, a different approach with training the mind and the bodies just to be able to do that stuff at a higher level. And it really works. It also has shown uh, it's, it's proven for our kids to be better in school, um, a better social life. I mean, so, it's really a unique training system that we have that I think separates us uh, from a lot. Um, but it's just, it, it's not only the equipment that we have, but it's the person that is able to use it and teach it, assess it. We, we assess our kids, but we also are able to teach them and get them better at that. You know, so he would be an absolute rock star to get on here for a webinar or a meeting and just an interview just to hear him talk about it because you heard him talk about it and I heard it that's about the 10th time I've heard it, maybe 20th. And it's still every time I'm like, wow, this is really cool. You know? So again, I'm very fortunate to have guys like Ray Bear. Absolutely. And and we will, and uh, you'll hear more about Ray uh, in the diamond allegiance. And I think for me, that's one thing that's really exciting about um, any group that we bring into this, but everybody's got their own little niche. Right. And I think what we all want to be able to do is to be able to help as many kids as we can um, and that's what we're about. So getting guys like Ray involved with the Diamond Allegiance, we're really excited about that and are definitely going to move in that direction. So the other two I'm going to kind of group together is this, this business side, right? And I, I think you bring up a good point. Um, you know, a lot of times in, in this travel baseball world, um, we lose sight that we are providing a service to families um, and we um, are running a business. Um, shouldn't be bashful about that, but we should also be smart about the way we do it and making sure that we're doing it in a professional way, right? So part of the Diamond Allegiance is to help to professionalize the space, right? So tell me about 
the importance in your mind of having people like Chris and Emily um, as part of your team and, and, and what they do for you? Wow. I mean, it, it's, you know, to me, it's, it's be, be great at what you're good at, you know, um, put people in positions to be great at what they're good at. I'm not great on the business side. That's not where my experience is. My experience is on the baseball side. So to have people that know what running a business looks like and to organize and to update and continue and to communicate with me on where we are, where we need to be, what we need to be doing, what we don't need to be doing, it's invaluable because it allows me to focus on the baseball side of things with our players. Uh, but it's also taught me, you know, five, 10 years from now, we have this conversation again. I would hope that I'm a lot better on the business aspect of things, you know, but you don't do that unless you have people like Chris and Emily to, to guide you in, in those directions and tell you, like, this is a mistake or this is, this is not what we need to be doing or this is what we need to be doing. We should think about this, try that. And because of those things, we failed. I mean, we've made mistakes and we failed in certain areas of running a business, but we've learned from them. We've gotten better from it. And we'll continue to do that. And we'll continue to make mistakes as any business does. And anyone that tells you that they don't, that's not true. <laughs> you know, no so doubt about that. So it's, it's been a it's been a really good learning experience for me. That's great. All right, let's transition to the players. So you've got um, a youth program, um, and then you've got a, I believe you guys term it a showcase program or the high school program. So yeah. Let, let's break the two separately um, and tell me, you know, if I was coming to you and I'm a parent and I've got a youth player, you know, what do I get with C35 and, and what does that look like for me? You know, so uh, everything that I do, because I've spent the last 15 years in, in professional baseball, I, I try to look at it out of that lens. So you have your, your high school teams or your showcase teams, your national level teams, your top tier team. And you treat that as your major league team almost, right? So then you look down into your youth, into your farm system, into your minor league system, and you want to invest in those kids just as much, if not more, than your 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 older high school, because you have your high school coaches in place. They're really good at what they do. These youth players, you're investing in them and their player development, in their growth as not only players, but kids, young men. So, and then you have all these different locations that you have now, you're implementing your system and your philosophies and your routines and trying to build them up as a player. Number one, have fun. Number two, we're trying to get better every single day. It's something that we're doing. So when we get to that showcase level, we're able to make a team and impact that team. And it's almost like you still have your players coming in from other, from other areas as your free agents, you know, but you still want to build your minor league players and build those prospects up. So when they get to that high school level, they've already heard the language. They know what they're expected. They, they've already got a basic understanding of what it takes to, to get to that level. Now it's going from that level to a potential college level. So, you know, we, we invest a lot into our youth and young players just as a major league team invests in their minor league players. I really like that analogy. Never heard that before, but it makes a ton of sense, Rob. Really, really, really like that. So, how much do you guys practice? Like, what does my day, to, what does my week to week, my month to month look like if I were a uh, youth player in your organization? We're, go we're going to practice. Um, all of our teams have designated times at our facilities located around the Carolinas. Um, they'll have one or two practices inside and they'll have one practice outside. Uh, we either rent fields um, in the areas that we don't own fields. We do own a complex in Goldsboro, North Carolina with six fields. And we, as, as you guys will come and see it on February 4th, we'll have all of our youth teams out there for a spring training style kickoff uh, with our teams. Um, so we do practice. We give them a manual. Um, all of our players that are not able to, to see us in person on a weekly basis, they have a manual um, that they'll get with throwing programs, hitting program, workout programs, conditioning programs, philosophies, uh, directory of all of our staff members so they can contact whoever they need. Um, so we, we give our players as much as we possibly can. Also knowing too that they are kids and they're and they're and they have kid lives, you know, so we don't want to put so much on them. We're taking away from their childhood. You know, we want we want to have all the resources possible for them. But at the same time, understand, hey, they might want to go to the beach for a couple of weeks during the summer. We, we need to we need to honor that and, and understand how important that is. Because I know how important that is, you know. So, you know, when we first started the, the showcase model, it was it was as practice as much as possible. The reason the manual was so important for us is because now you're you're drawing kids from all over, not from one little area. So practice times are very difficult. When you go to Atlanta for a week, 
you don't want to come home on Tuesday and have everyone come back two hours away or three hours away or even five hours away and hold a practice. You know, so it's very difficult to do that. So we have those optional workouts, whether it's just inside of our facility or on a field. But that's where the manual becomes really, really important. So those players are able to get that that weekly work in. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. Um, so started what we're two thousand you said two thousand and eighteen, correct? Correct. So we're five years in. Where do you see C thirty five five years from now? Wow, that is that is such a full question because there's just so much, so many uncertainties with it. You know, I think us, us joining the Diamond Allegiance only helps us. Um, I, I want to continue to grow, but I, you know, I want to continue to grow in a way where myself and our staff are still available and accessible. Um, once we get to a point that we're not. It may be time to you know take a look back and kind of see are are we doing this for the right reasons? Um, I still think we have plenty of plenty of room to grow, um, not just from a numbers perspective, but just from how we do things and how much better we can get as a staff and as an organization. So I think the sky is the limit. You know, our our official name is the Carolina Thirty Fives. So you know, being in Georgia and Tennessee and California may not make a ton of sense, but you know. Never say never. I've, I've already had some conversations with, with people out of Tennessee. So, you know, never say never of, of how you actually grow. Uh, but I'll just tell you, it's, it's just day by day. We're only going to be as good as our staff. And if our staff continues to, to pour in like we have, the sky's the limit. Awesome. Well, um, last question for you here today. Um, a humble brag. And obviously, we're super excited to add somebody like you, Rob, to the Diamond Allegiance and, and your program. But um, you know, what attracted you to the Diamond Allegiance and what excites you the most about being part of what we're doing? I, I just think how, how passionate the Diamond Allegiance is about what youth baseball and what this industry needs. You know, when, when we visited and, and y'all came to, to us to visit, the conversations were just something that has been on my mind for a, a long time, where to put a group of however many teams we can and organizations we can put at the table to make this industry stronger because it needs to be stronger. There's a lot of good in this industry, but there's also a lot of bad. And to bridge that gap with the, the amount of, of the organizations and the power that those organizations have for the industry to see us come together off the field and communicate and brainstorm and come up with ideas to make this game better is only going to make the industry as a whole better, you know, because it's so divided. It's it's a it's a cutthroat industry. I've always kind of looked at it as organizations or sports agencies, you know. And if you're ever in that world right there, it is it is backstabbing as it gets, you know. So it's if 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 the world and the, and the country and the industry can see us coming together to to grow the game, make the game stronger, is we're going to compete on the field now, and that's what we all want. We want to. I look at it again. I'll refer to it as Major League Baseball. Diamond Allegiance is Major League Baseball. You have your teams. On the field, you're trying to beat each other's brains in. Off the field, you're coming together as a as a as a group and figuring out how to make Major League Baseball better. We come together. How do we make travel baseball better? And to be able to do that and to collaborate with some of the brightest minds that this industry has to offer, that was a selling point to me. But what our kids get, what our kids have access to, what our families have access to, it was a no brainer. And I know that our group, our staff, our players, our families are extremely excited to be a part of the Diamond Allegiance.